we'll get started. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss Paul Creek Greenway from Little Rock Road to Loy Court. Uh, I'm Bert Lynn, Division Director for Capital Planning for Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation. I'm joined tonight by Senior Planner Katie Lloyd, uh, Project Manager Robert Billings. Um, I'm going to take a few slides here, and then Katie's going to present about greenways and our current projects, and then we'll turn it over to our uh, design consultants who will walk us through the specifics of this section of Greenway Trail. Uh, we'll end with time for questions and comments at the end. Before I move to the next slide, I wanted to also introduce W. Lee Jones, Director for Parks and Recreation for Mecklenburg County. Thank you, Bert, and good evening, everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out to hear about one of our most sought after amenities, and that are green, those are greenways. We have some other distinguished guests tonight, and that includes um, um, Commissioner Lee Altman um, of the Board of County Commissioners. We have Mr. Kip Kaiser from our Park and Recreation Commission. We have Doug Burnett, a former member of our Park and Recreation Commission. We also have uh, my uh, supervisor, Deputy County Manager Leslie Johnson. Um, I also have some other staff members, including our Park Superintendent Chris Hunter and our Division Director for uh, Maintenance and Operations, uh, Mr. Greg Clemmer. So just very happy to have everyone here tonight and looking forward to an engaging session. We'll also have um, one of our Park uh, region, Regional Managers uh, Mr. Michael Campbell on board. So I'm going to turn it back over to Bert Lynn and I'm looking forward to a great presentation tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lee. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to walk you through some of the features of our virtual meeting platform. It's important that everyone stays muted throughout the presentation. You'll notice a button on the bottom left of your screen. Make sure that there's a red slash through the microphone there, and that will indicate that you are muted. There will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation, either by unmuting or using the chat feature. At that time, you're free to turn on your video um, so we can see you if you'd like. If you want to remain anonymous, you can do that too. Um, there's another button on the bottom of your screen to bring up your chat box. Um, Let's test the chat feature now. So please type in your, your name, your zip code, and your favorite place to walk or bike. And that could be a greenway trail, that could be a park, or it could be kind of through your neighborhood. So we'll give everybody a minute to go in and find the chat button and add some info there. I'm gonna add mine. All right, we've got a few things coming in. Six Mile Greenway, Whitewater Center. Uh, Death Valley, there you go. Clemson fan, or a California Desert fan. Four Mile Creek Greenway, Briar Creek Greenway. Another Whitewater Center, very good. All right, we'll move on to the next slide. All right, so uh, projects like this take a big team to pull off. Uh, this team includes Banesh as our landscape architecture and civil engineering leads. We're gonna hear from Jeff Ashbaugh and Kevin Westra uh, a little bit later. They're leading the project for Banesh. They're working with McKim and Creed and Froling and Robertson on the surveying and geotechnical and environmental engineering as part of the project. And then my last slide here, some fun facts. So this is something that, that Katie started on the last few and, and I, I think these are pretty interesting. So um, we wanted to talk a little bit about the Paul Creek Corridor here. So some people think that the creek was named for an animal paw. And if you go down to the creek, you'll see lots of little 
uh, raccoon paws here and there and everywhere. Uh, but it was more likely um, that the creek was actually named for the native pawpaw fruit trees that once grew along the banks here in Mecklenburg County. The creek begins near Toddville Road in West Mecklenburg County and travels to the Catawba River just south of Interstate 85 and adjacent to Berry Hill Nature Preserve, which is another property that Mecklenburg County uh, operates. Uh, Paul Creek is one of the first 12 named creeks in the county, um, dating back to maps that we were able to find uh, back in 1789. So, Hopefully you learned a little bit of something with that. Um, I'm gonna turn it over now um, to senior planner, Katie Lloyd, who's gonna give us a, an overview on our Greenway Trail system. Thank you, Bert. Uh, so Greenway Trails are strips of undeveloped land uh, near urban areas set aside for recreational use or environmental protection. We build Greenway Trails to activate this land as linear parks that connect people and places by linking neighborhoods, offices, parks, schools, and shopping areas. These trails provide alternate ways to move through our city, suburbs, and small towns, both for transportation and for recreation. Paved walking and biking trails, as Lee mentioned earlier, are the number one requested amenity by the residents of Mecklenburg County, according to citizen surveys completed as part of our 2015 and current 2020 master plan update. Our current master plan calls for over 300 miles of greenway trails along creeks and streams, and an additional 200 miles of urban trails along our roadways and through urban areas. Currently, we have more than 56 miles of Greenway trails completed with the goal to add 30 miles of new trail between 2019 and 2023. To accomplish that goal and to meet community demand, we, are, we and our partners are working on an accelerated Greenway plan that includes over 40 miles of trail currently in design or construction. This map shows the location of all Greenway projects we are working on through the Accelerated Greenway Plan. The blue dots indicate projects that are funded through our five-year capital improvement plan. The magenta dots represent the five new projects that were funded last year to meet community demand and to increase access to our trail network. You can see Paw Creek circled here in magenta. Zooming in a little bit, Paul Creek shown on the left of the screen in orange um, is a segment in Western North Carolina. This will be the first funded phase of Paul Creek Greenway. The dashed lines on this map show future unfunded projects. Since most of this phase of Paul Creek Greenway will be constructed through the Robert L. Smith Park property, I wanted to give you a little background on the park amenities. This park is located at 1604 Little Rock Road. The first phase of the 211 acre park site was developed in 2009, adding a parking lot, restrooms, picnic area, playground, trails, disc golf course, and athletic fields. The park was named in memory of a Charlotte police officer who was killed in the line of duty in 1987. With that, I will turn it over to Jeff with our design team with the NESH to walk you through the specifics of this trail project. Hey, Jeff, I believe you're still muted. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the little nudge there, Katie. You might be curious to know when the Greenway will be complete. Uh, presently, the design is underway. Our goal is to have the design and permitting complete by the end of 2021. Bidding will start in early 2022 with construction starting in the summer of 2022 and lasting for about a year and ending in summer of 2023. These dates are subject to change uh, depending on uh, the weather and the permitting process that we have to go through to get approvals for the project. I'm gonna show you a, a map, a site plan uh, for the Greenway. The Paul Creek Greenway project is shown here on this map uh, as a solid pink line and it will connect uh, Robert Smith Park, District Park, and that's shown on the right hand side of the, the map and it will go and it finish at Beckon Hall Drive and that's located in the Paul Creek Village neighborhood. That's to the left of the map. 
Additional points of access are proposed at Raycliffe Lane, right there where the, the cursor is. And um, also Paw Village Road, that's down to the left. You can see a couple points of access right there and connect to the sidewalk system. There may be additional points of access at Tall Tree Lane in the middle of the Greenway and Loy Court. It just depends on the uh, feasibility of making those connections and the budget because we do have to get across the creek in some instances. In some instances. The distance of the main trail from start to finish from the park all the way to Loy Court is approximately two miles. So a very good, good walk. And you'll also notice the white dashed lines on either end that kind of book in the map. And these represent future connections. Um, <clears throat> the master plan that Katie showed you a little bit earlier, on that master plan, there is a connection to Stewart Creek Greenway to the east and eventually maybe even a connection to the White Water Center to the west. It's depending on funding uh, in the future. So some excellent connections, more than just connecting the neighborhoods, there's an opportunity for some uh, regional connections, you might say. So now we're gonna zoom in to the trail a little bit uh, closer <clears throat> to give you a better look. So starting from the east, the project will begin near the restrooms in, in Robert L. Smith Park. And that's indicated by the circle, the TH inside the circle right there. And the orange shaded rectangle is the restroom and then there's a playground just behind it. So that's about where it will start. Parking is also available. You can see it right there. It's easily accessed off um, a Little Rock Road. And uh, additionally, well, from this point, the, the trail will head north through the woods a short distance to the sanitary sewer right of way along uh, Paul Creek, right there where you see the mouse, see the mouse or the cursor. That's where the sanitary sewer right away is located. You might have noticed some of the construction that's been taking place over the last year or two right there. So from there, from that intersection, the Greenway will head north or actually it will head west along Paul Creek, along the right-of-way, sanitary sewer right-of-way on the south side of the creek. And the creek is shown on this map as a blue dashed line. That represents Paul Creek right there. And the greenway is shown as a kind of the pink solid line. And boardwalks will be used in some locations to cross wetlands and small streams. Near the bottom left corner of the page, you'll see a short 0.12 mile spur trail that will connect to Raycliffe Lane. So neighborhoods on the south side of the Greenway can ac have access to the Greenway. And now we'll continue, we're gonna to go to the next slide and we're gonna continue west. So as the trail continues west, it will continue beside Paul Creek and then cross over Paul Creek near Paul Tuckett Road. A pedestrian bridge will be constructed right there in that location that Katie is circling. And that will allow a, a really a good, a good safe crossing location to get across the creek. And uh, let's see here. Connections will also be made at uh, Paul Village Road that you see to the left. Going down a little further, right there. Greenway will connect to the existing sidewalk system. And depending on um, funding, a new pedestrian bridge and underpass uh, may be constructed in Beckenhall. And if funds are available, the trail will be extended to Loy Court. Otherwise, the Greenway will just stop right there at Beckenhall Drive. All right. And then the next slide gives you just a, a feel for some of the character of the Greenway. Uh, these are some of the sites that you'll see uh, along the corridor. There's beautiful rocks. Uh, there's some, you know, I think, some bay apple that you see in the very top right corner, some very pretty vegetation, some uh, native azaleas in the, the bottom left corner. 
And the creek itself is very scenic and attractive as, as well. The water is very clear and has a very uh, nice sandy bottom and rocky outcrops in some locations and really pretty vegetation along the creek banks. And now Kevin's going to tell us a little bit uh, of more, the project engineer. Thank you, Jeff. Um, as indicated on the previous slides that uh, Jeff was showing, the proposed greenway alignment has several locations where it crosses the creek and tributary streams or ditches. This slide shows an example of a pedestrian bridge that is uh, common to uh, Mecklenburg County greenways. Typically, the pedestrian bridge will span the entire length of the channel and be the same width as the pedestrian trail. Pedestrian bridges are expected where the trail crosses the main channel of Paw Creek. This is an example of a boardwalk crossing. Um, boardwalks may be used to cross smaller ditches or wetlands. Uh, several locations along the trail alignment have been identified as possible boardwalk locations. This project may also include a proposed underpass at Beckenhall Drive. Here the trail will pass under the existing roadway bridge. Uh, this allows the user to safely cross under the road without any conflict with the traffic above. Uh, the trail will have, also have a connection up to the street um, to the adjacent sidewalks that, that tie into the neighborhoods. This graphic shows some example uh, signage common across Mecklenburg County Greenways. Uh, the top left drawing shows some guide signs. These are placed along the path to direct the user to connector paths or other important route information. The picture to the right is an example of a mile marker with a regulatory sign providing notes on local ordinances or trail rules. The photo in the bottom middle is an example of a diagrammic sign with trail alignments, junctions, and locations of other nearby amenities. Uh, these typically are placed at trailheads or other significant junctions. The final photo in the bottom left is an example of an educational signage. Uh, this is placed at significant historic, natural, or other identified locations. These provide uh, photos and narrative related to the surroundings. With that, I'll uh, turn it back over to Katie. Thanks, Jeff and Kevin. Um, I believe Katie Daughtry, who is on um, monitoring the chat, has been watching for any questions. Um, Katie, do you want to, we'll start with maybe the questions that have gone into the chat. <laughs> and um, Katie can read those out. And then we'll also open it up if you want to unmute and ask questions after. Sure. Katie, so there have been some questions and comments coming in through the chat. Um, the first question wanted to know about how this trail, if at all, would eventually connect to the Whitewater Center. That's a good question. And I'm going to back up a little bit, actually, just to, so we can look at the overall countywide map. Um, and as you can kind of see here, so the orange line as shown here is the, the section that's funded through um, Robert L. Smith Park. Um, as, as Jeff mentioned, to the east, it would connect kind of over and eventually to Stewart Creek Greenway, which is right here. And then to the west, it would kind of go north following 45 and then cut over at some point using some of the urban trails that I mentioned earlier, which are the, the trails along streets, um, to cut over to Long Creek Tributary, which gets you straight to uh, the Whitewater Center, which is right here. So as the crow flies, it's not too far, but we will have to kind of work around and maneuver around the uh, 45 um, and the other obstacles in between the way. But none of the dashed lines on this map are currently funded for construction. So these would be future trails that we'll evaluate in um, our, our future funding cycles. So to that point, Katie, um, there was a question about how frequently these types of projects are funded. I'm assuming that that would probably be a reference to our CIP, but then also, um, you know, given that information, how long would it take to make that connection to the Whitewater Center? That's a good question. So yes, our, um, our projects are typically funded in five-year increments. We're currently working on the fiscal years 19 through 23 CIP or Capital Improvement Plan. Um, so we'll be evaluating projects for our next five-year cycle, which are years 24 through 28. 
And so we will fund, um, it'll kind of depend on how many projects we fund. I'll say typically we fund projects that are somewhere between um, one and three miles long, um, which is kind of right where this, this section is, right at kind of one and a half to two miles. So you can kind of imagine like how many projects that may be to break up to get over in that direction. It'd probably be two to three projects, um, depending on how we um, route that urban trail piece. So um, it's possible, you know, that those two could be funded in future CIPs, maybe not the same one. Uh, so, you know, it wouldn't be any time in the, in, the, in the short term, but it could happen in the future. May I ask a question along those lines? Yeah, sure, go ahead. I, I, I assume that I don't know how cut how um, set in stone those westward expansions are. For example, um, you know, it seems like going through the urban piece to the north might be difficult. But if you went, now I'm going to be bold and draw on your screen here. Um, if you went down this way, you have a new park that you guys, Parks and Rec, is going to own in that area to come up from the south might be uh, allow you to do it more readily. Yes, that, that's totally fine to draw. Um, it's uh, it's definitely possible that that piece kind of to the south, and this is actually our previous master plan. We're in the process of updating this with a couple of kind of key tweaks um, with how these these connections are made, particularly over this big junction of 85 and 45. Um, so yes, it's possible it could kind of be some combination of, of over under south and north, but that's a good point. So the master plan is a very high level document. So this is um, following creeks or following roadways um, so there are a lot of feasibility studies and planning that happens in between, you know, this level of detail and the, the funded project. All right. Um, so the next question that was posted in the chat was, does the county currently own the land in Paw Creek Village? Um, because this uh, participant was under the impression that it was owned by the HOA. And if not, how does that work? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, in this map, you'll see the, the land shown with the kind of the yellow outline that's a little bit darker green. That is land that Mecklenburg County owns. And then the, the slightly lighter green without the yellow dashed is land where Mecklenburg County has an easement over the property. And some of this land was dedicated as part of the development of the neighborhood. So it came from the developers to Mecklenburg County as part of agreements made during the development process. Right. Um, so we had a question about where where one would go to show support for building out this Greenway corridor and getting more projects um, in this area of, of the county. It's a good question. Um, we always encourage you to let us know your uh, let us and let elected officials know your preferences and know your interest for funding in Mecklenburg County. Um, we also have um, a process, a public engagement process currently as part of our master plan where we're looking at priorities across the entire county. And I'll type in the, the public input link. We actually have a, a draft um, executive summary out for public review through the end of the month of our, our master plan executive summary. So we're, we're hoping to adopt that this summer. And that'll help guide some of the priorities and some of how we seek funding for the next capital improvement plan, really possibly the next two um, capital funding cycles. All right, we've got a lot of questions about access, Katie. Um, there was a question about um, having more access to the south side of the creek, to the older neighborhoods that are on the south side, um, to West Mech High and um, Wilson Jr. I may not have gotten the full name of that school, I apologize. Um, and there were a couple of folks that were curious about a connection to Everett Drive and Tall Tree Lane. So I'll be happy to repeat any of that if you need it. <laughs> sure, I'm gonna start and then I'll turn it over to Jeff and Kevin to talk a little bit more about some of the, um, the characteristics of this part property. Um, we have studied trying to look at where we can make additional connections. A lot of the limitations on this property is topography. Um, there's a lot of a slope on this, a lot of rise and fall, as well as some of the environmental features and, and where we're limiting where possible um, additional creek crossings just to keep in the project budget. But Jeff and Kevin, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, no, I think you've made an excellent point. Um, one thing that we can't really see on this map that I'm sure a, a lot of the adjacent neighbors know is the topography. You mentioned that there are areas 
that are fairly steep and wooded uh, in, in terms of the terrain. So I'm just picking an example. Let's just say if we wanted to make a connection here at Everett Drive, um, I would say that's probably maybe a half a mile down to the main trail or so. And it would go through some pretty steep and wooded terrain in there and rocks in some locations as well. So a connection could be made. It would just have to be studied. And it's also um, budget dependent. So we had to be very careful, I think, in terms of priority as we really focused on that, the main trail spur. And this is always a balance um, because we're you know, looking at maybe trying to make a longer main trail connection at first to get the primary trail in and then come back and look and focus on those uh, shorter connections later uh, in the future. So that, that's some of the thought process and sure additional access points can certainly be, be studied and we hope, we hope all the neighbors come down and ask for access points because um, that would be a, a fantastic thing to give as, as many people access as we can. And sometimes, you know, after we see uh, social trails, we'll call them, uh, made in particular areas, we'll come back and add trails because, because the people tell us where the trails are needed because uh, we know who's, you know, where they're walking and we can see that. So uh, th that's a little bit of the thought process that went into those connections that are shown and certainly can study more. Yeah, the one other thing I'll add too is that not really shown in this map, there was an existing disc golf course in this area as well. Um, so between the Charlotte Water Project, which which we mentioned earlier has been under construction for the past year or two, um, and our project, it has impacted where those um, disc, where that disc golf course was and where it can go back. And so kind of keeping room that is is for disc golf in this area is also very important. One other thing I'll mention, I don't know if anyone on the call who was here back in 2009, 2008, 2009, Jeff mentioned the rock, but when they built these fields, I think um, they discovered that this is a very uh, rocky piece of land and, and a lot of boulders and a lot of rock was uncovered in, in the grading exercise here. Katie, I believe I captured everything that was in the chat. Um, so I guess we can open it up to anybody who might wanna speak up. And I actually got a question um, in the chat as well about uh, a potential connection to uh, Forest uh, Pawtucket Park, um, which is just off the screen right here. So um, yes, uh, we have looked internally and discussed potential connections to Forest Pawt Pawtucket Park, which is up here, that would require some additional real estate acquisition. So I think um, for this project, um, trying to get the main line down and get the project started, um, we could study that potentially for a future project phase when we're able to continue the greenway to the east. Um, but we'd love to hear kind of um, more ideas about connections like that. And if that's something that interests you, we would love to connect the two parks if possible. Uh, my name is Jerry Cooney and I live um, uh, at the end of Raycliffe at one of the access points. My concern with that is um, the amount of traffic that would be coming down my street. Are people allowed to park there or are there gonna be city signs where, they, where they're not gonna be able to park? Because I have that problem now where people just go down there and park at the end of the street. Okay, um, so I don't think, typically the city does not sign um, no parking signs unless there is an active issue and then they will and we can work with them and we can work with you to address any parking issues that that do happen i'll say that we um typically find we have over 200 access points in our system and, and very rarely do we have issues where there is you know an active parking issue then that's why in this section we're very excited to have this large parking area where we can direct pe people to so um, I would say that we would stay in touch with you and if you had problems we could work with you either by starting with some um, some bar wayfinding sign to discourage it and to, to push people over to the parking lot or if it becomes a safety or a um, a hazard for you ingressing and egressing your driveway or your neighbors and um, we would help to work with the city to discourage that parking well yeah because it's all wooded through the right there i mean all all of that is woods except for my house right there that's you can see kind of right there on the line but um i, I just have an issue if people are going to start parking down there to get access to the trail one you know who cleans up the road because currently I clean the road up, you know what I mean? 
I keep it uh, clean so that it stays nice. And then two, what about the trash that's gonna be all thrown down there through that pedestrian walkway and stuff like that? I mean, so who takes care of that? Yeah, and, and anyone from operations that wants to um, add to this do as well. Um, typically at our access points like this, we are providing trash receptacles and we do um, empty those on a regular basis. So we will hopefully <laughs> maybe help with that a little bit because we will have a, a trash can where maybe there isn't one now. Um, and we also noticed that when we add these access points, you have more activity. I think I've been down there too and seen some, some dumping activity at some yeah. of these dead end roads. And so once we have this kind of pedestrian access where people are walking and biking to, or we have park rangers and park staff monitoring, hopefully we will also see less of that dumping activity as well because it's just more activity. Okay, and then hey, I also, great. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I was gonna to respond to your question. This is Greg Clemmer, Division Director of Operations. Usually, Katie's correct. When you start increasing the use of the area, a lot of that stuff does go away. And if we do have our rangers, we'll increase patrols. We do, you can, you as a citizen can also let us know about it and we'll, we'll address it right when it happens. But we will have maintenance going down this greenway um, sometimes daily, if not two or three times a week. And we can consistently try to monitor that. So I wouldn't be concerned about the, the, the walkway leading on the greenway up to the, the road. Uh, we will have staff out there monitoring that. Okay, and then um, what about nighttime? Is it gonna be lit up at night where people can go down there? Is there gonna be no, a gate at the, okay. So how do you no, stop don't... that at the mm -hmm. end of that road on Raycliffe? Is there a gate there or? We do not gate our greenways. Uh, we do not light our greenways um, because, uh, but we also, people, technically the greenways um, never really close, uh, but we discourage use at night. It's unsafe. Uh, and our experience on our other greenways, as Katie was mentioning, was we don't usually have this problem at all. Um, the only greenways that people kind of walk on at night are our urban, urban greenways because they're really transportation corridors. So we have not had that problem um, in the evening. Uh, so I, I don't see that being an issue. Well, I, I hate to say this, but it's an issue today already because they walk through there constantly. The um, high school kids do. They've been doing it for years. That trail has always been there. And they come over from Paul Tuckett up through and they walk straight up Raycliff. You know what I mean? To the school. So. I don't know how it's going to deter anybody from doing it at nighttime now because they do it during the day. They do it mid evening and, and all of that. Yeah. You'll be I'll, surprised. I'll... You'll be surprised. It, it's interesting that when you start building these trails and more and more people use them, a lot of the activity that shouldn't really be occurring really goes away because the more people are participating on the trails and seeing things and then making us aware of it and we try to work to, to discourage that activity so our experience is when these trails are built a lot of that unwanted activity really goes away it, it's a pretty it's pretty amazing okay i'm gonna trust you on that one and and we are totally here uh to, and you have my contact information on the the public input side um, and you can call us if you, you have issues or email us with, with any concerns you have, you know, during construction or after. Right, yeah, I've got it right here, Katie, you're correct. So I'll keep that, so. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions anyone wanna unmute? I will say I saw Mark Laughlin, who's one of our um, Park and Recreation Commissioners. He um, noted that there is currently an opening on the Park and Recreation Commission for the Center One District, which is a little east towards uptown of this area, if anyone on the call happens to be interested. Katie, we've had a few more comments and questions come through the chat um, while y'all were talking. Uh, one of the comments, maybe questions too, was um, if there was going to be any public art as part of this project, because this particular individual had been looking for a place to do a STEM um, related rock art installation. So we do not currently have plans for public art on this section of trail. Um, we do have a 1% for our uh, ordinance across our entire um, capital improvement 
plan uh, cycle. So all of the funding for these capital projects does go towards public art. Um, but because um, that 1%, it doesn't add up to huge sums on some projects, we tend to pool those. Um, and so we're not currently building the, the public art project at this site, uh, but we will have some others in the area. All right, another comment that came through was um, if you happen to study an access to, and I'm probably gonna butcher this, Delissa Drive, uh, this gentleman said to contact him. He'd be happy to help. And I'll give you his name <laughs> after the Okay, meeting. cool, I'll, get, I'll follow up with you. And if you wanna yeah. say any more about that connection, let me know. Oh, I see it, it's down here. Sorry, I was looking, I was moving stuff on my screen. Okay, very interesting, thank you. Um, and then there was a question about whether or not we were planning to add parking to the park as part of this project. Not as part of this project, no. Um, we will be utilizing the same parking lot as the, the park. And Greg did mention earlier that our Greenway trails are open 24 seven. So they're used for commuting. And once this, you know, in the future becomes kind of a more regional connection, um, you will see, potentially see people using this for commuting, say down to Amazon or, or somewhere else. Um, but but our park parking lots do still close at, at dusk tip, or at, um, at sunset typically. Uh, so we'll be utilizing the, the existing parking there. Great, the last comment, um, or I'm sorry, it wasn't the last comment, the <laughs> next to last comment so far. Um, are there other trails planned for the park? So um, trails that would just be contained within the park and part of the park amenities? So the, I think the first phase of this park development um, was just that, it was a first phase. So there is potential in the future for future expansion of the park amenities, whether it's an expansion at that site or some other activation of the park from other, other points of access. Um, none of those are currently funded. The one area where there could be some additional trails is the uh, reimagined disc golf once the disc golf course goes back into, um, into the park after we work with, with the, the Charlotte Disc Golf Club. Great, the last comment that um, I, I've seen, if, and I'm, I apologize if I've missed any, is it appears that there are some really strong um, advocates we're connecting to some of these neighborhoods on the South. And so I think that they are really hoping that that will be studied as part of this project. We hear you and it's actually really exciting to hear that, that you want more connections. So uh, we'll take a look at that as a project team and see what's feasible from a cost perspective and from a um, topography perspective. Um, and, and we'll post updates throughout this process to the public input site, which is listed right here. That's all I have, Katie. All right, and if there's any other questions um, from anyone else on the call, feel free to keep chatting or um, unmute. I'd love to hear from you. If not, I'm gonna do a, another quick plug for Mac Playbook, the executive summary. I copied it into the chat. Um, and Katie, would you mind recopying that as well? So you can check out what we are planning uh, for park and recreation as a whole in Mecklenburg County. So parks, rec centers, um, greenway trails in the future. And you can read some of the proposed um, principles and goals of our uh, comprehensive master plan. So take a look at that. You can provide feedback, feedback directly on the website. Um, or you can give us a call or send us an email with any feedback you may have. And here's my contact information as well. So this is my mobile number, so you can text me if you're a texter and not a caller, that's fine too. <laughs> Does our voice count as heard from the meeting or should we, do you recommend that we also do the public input? Oh, we, we hear you and, and we're actually gonna, sorry, I should have mentioned earlier, we're recording this meeting and we will post this meeting to the website too. So people that missed the call um, will be able to go back and, and watch the information that was presented, the conversations that were had, uh, but feel free to, to write any additional thoughts you may have on public input.
Thanks again for everybody attending tonight. Hello, Carl Logan here. Um, and this is not really regarding the Greenway itself, but um, my property does touch the Robert Smith Park near the parking lot for the um, where, where the Greenway would would would, would park. Um, are there any de development process or, or as far as finishing the park at this time? Do you know? There are no currently. There's not a funded phase two of the park park development. Um, but if you guys have any other ideas for amenities, feel free to, to add those to the page or, or let us know as well. So we can keep that in mind for future funding cycles. We look forward to taking a nice long walk. Thank you all so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I look forward to walking on it too. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.